Hi there, welcome to Anime Studio Debut. This video is meant to get you up and running with the software as quickly as possible. So let's dive right in and get started. The first thing after you install Anime Studio Debut and you launch it, the first thing you'll see after you install and launch Anime Studio Debut is a splash screen. And I closed out of mine, but basically that splash screen, if I come up here, I can show you what it looks like. Basically, this will give you access to tutorials. You can register your product. You can go to Content Paradise for more content, and you can even download a bonus content pack. So you can view all of that on the welcome or splash screen. If you never want to see this again, you can always click don't show this again. And for this tutorial, we don't need to access this screen. So once you see it, you can click off and then you're good to go. Now, Anime Studio will also launch with a sample project. You'll get a few of these and they'll randomly rotate by default each time you open up the software. And these are great examples and show you the power of the software. If I come down here and play this one, you can see we have a little animation occurring and it looks pretty cool. So you can use these as inspiration if you want. Right now though, I want to create a new document because I'll show you how to set up a new document, show you some of the tools, and then get you up and running with the animation process. Let's go up here to File and then New. Or you can use Command N on Mac or Control N on Windows. So now we have a brand new document. The first thing I want to show you is how to set up this document. You should always set up your document first before you go any further. That way, there's no problems later on with syncing up your animation with a different frame rate or trying to adjust for different dimensions. If I come up here and go to File, I can choose Project Settings. Here, I have the ability to adjust different project settings, such as the dimensions and frame rate. So here, I can choose, for instance, 480p widescreen. That's the highest you can go with this software. You can also choose to bump up or reduce your frame rate. Now the frame rate will depend on your needs. 24 frames per second is pretty standard in cinema, while 30 frames per second is also a standard for different types of media. And so it'll just depend on what you want for your project. And this is something you can play around with as well in your own time. The other thing you'll want to choose is the background color. By default, it's set to this off white color, but with the color picker, you can come in and make adjustments as you see fit. In this case, we're just going to leave it as is and click cancel. And once you're good, you can click OK. On your right, you have your layers panel. This is where you can create new layers to build your objects. If we click on this button, you'll see we have a few different layers to choose from. Vector allows us to draw with our drawing tools. Image layers allow us to import images. Bones allow us to create bone structures for characters. A switch layer allows us to switch objects on and off as we see fit. And then we can also import audio and create text. Right now, I'm going to start with layer one. We can come over here and we have access to a variety of drawing tools. We can use the add point tool to just add points on the canvas. So if I click and drag, you can see I have two points. If I release, and then click and drag again, you can see I can continue on adding points to this object. And I can keep going and make it as elaborate as I want it to be. Once you're done, if you want, you can close off the shape by putting your cursor near the first point and releasing. Now the object is closed in and we have a completed shape. From here, you have access to other tools. We could, for instance, come over here to the style panel and adjust the color. We could also adjust the color for the stroke, as well as adjust the width of the stroke. You have brushes, which allow you to change the way the lines look. You can see we have our brush settings right here. I can do different brush settings just like this. And we can also adjust different things down here that will create different effects for our brush. So I could adjust the new angle drift, which is new to Anime Studio 11. And you can see I can twist and turn the way the brush looks, creating different effects. 
Speaking of effects, you have different effects for your fill and stroke colors right up here. So for instance, we could create a shaded effect. This allows us to place a shadow on the fill. You can see it right there. And we can adjust different parameters for that. Other effects work similar. Whenever you select an effect, a new box will come up and then you can adjust those settings. So the draw and fill tools allow you to create different objects as you see fit. And you can play around with these on your own time. But just note that you need a vector layer in order to draw. And these tools, the draw and fill tools, will allow you to create different designs. The layer tools, on the other hand, act a little bit differently. Basically, these tools will alter this layer. So if you have multiple layers, only the layer you have selected will be affected. And the same applies if you have drawing tools as well. But with the layer tools, such as the transform layer, we can go in and move this object around. We can also rotate it and we can resize it. So that tool is very versatile. You also have the ability to change the anchor point of your layer. The anchor point is basically the focal point of the layer. You can see right now our anchor is right there. That's what the crosshair is. And when I rotate, it rotates from the center. But if I were to come up here and place my anchor point, let's say on the edge, and then I rotate, you can see it rotates from that end, creating a different effect. Your camera tools also allow you to move and zoom in on the action. Now, if you select a drawing tool, and if you're having troubles, let's say you want to draw something out on a vector layer, but you don't have your drawing tools available to you. You don't have your add point tool as an example. Look towards your timeline. If you're on anything other than frame zero, you won't be able to access those drawing tools. Go back to frame zero to access those tools. Frame zero acts as your workspace. Here you can draw and test things out before jumping into the actual animation process. Now, I want to show you something a little bit more elaborate. And to do this, I'm going to access the content library. If we come up here and go to window, we can choose library. Now I can bring it over like this, and you can see we have different categories that we can choose from. Now with Anime Studio, we have some assets built right in that we can use right off the bat. If I come down here, you can see we have access to several different character folders. Let's go into Anime Studio 11. Now you'll see we have the new characters for this version of Anime Studio. I'm going to click on the dragon and then click on the double check mark to bring him into my project. Now, let me just hide this layer, the layer I was working with before. And you can do this by clicking on the eyeballs next to that layer. If you want to remove the layer entirely, you can click on the layer and then choose the trash can. Now you can see we have a rig on screen. That's what we call our characters who have bones. If we scrub forward on the timeline by holding down the left mouse button and just moving forward like this, we can see what the animation looks like. You can also come back here to the beginning and then hit the play button to do the same thing. Now, this animation is pretty elaborate, but as you can see, we have these little dots on our timeline. These indicate changes on the timeline. It also indicates that there's animation currently moving on the timeline. And when you have a bone structure set up, like we do here, you can come over here, let's say to frame zero. Remember frame zero is our workspace. And we can grab some bone tools now. The one I want to check out is the manipulate bones tool. So we can click that, and we can click and drag, and we can move these bones around. And this gives us a lot of options. This is how we can animate our characters on the timeline. So, if I were to come down here and just remove all these keyframes, and then we page forward to let's say frame 24, and I move some of my bones again with that manipulate bones tool, you're going to see now we have a dot on the timeline. And if we play back, everything is being recorded as I do this. From the start point to the point where I animated out, everything in between is covered 
Anime Studio will interpolate those positions and create animation. There's a lot more you can do with Anime Studio Debut, but hopefully this little demonstration will help you become familiar with the interface and how to get started with the software. And we do have many more tutorials on Anime Studio, so if you're looking for something specific, feel free to browse the playlist on YouTube and view the items that interest you. And if you'd like more information on Anime Studio, visit anime.smithmicro.com.